Hello. Welcome to my tutorial on creating fantasy city maps with Wonderdraft and the Medieval Fantasy City Generator. Now the first step is setting up the Medieval Fantasy City Generator. You can find the URL above, uh, but you can also find it by googling the Medieval Fantasy City Generator. Um, there are a lot of options. Basically it's a random generator that allows you to create settlements of various sizes, uh, and there are lots of options. There are a couple that work really well for bringing the city into Wonderdraft and some that um, might be a little more challenging or require a little extra work. There are a number of color options in the generator, including this uh, pastel that will automatically color your wards for you. Uh, that's great if you're okay with the wards that it chooses. Uh, I'm gonna turn it off. Of the various color options, you can see pretty much uh, just about anything you can imagine. We're only focused on the color of the buildings, so pretty much default ink, black and white, uh, and even ancient work best. I'm going to go with black and white here. Uh, we're not going to use any annotations because we're going to do the labeling in Wonderdraft. And hatching is not a real good choice for, for bringing into Wonderdraft, although I'm sure some people might like it. Uh, thin lines is also not recommended. The thick lines kind of give more definition uh, and allow to work with the, um, the image a little bit better before we bring it in. Different tower options, different building shape and styles. No stroke is great if you just want to zone out neighborhoods, um, but we're going to go with complex. Uh, it just gives the buildings a more realistic shape. Uh, and then we're not going to have any water in this. We're using a plains town, so I do want to take a look at the more roads and farm fields. Uh, farm fields is something that some people like. You might want to put that on there. Uh, I don't care for the style much, uh, so I take it off. The Citadel adds a keep, a walled keep, uh, to your city, uh, but it's important to note that it always puts it on the outside. So if you were looking for that keep in the center, um, you're going to have to do quite a bit of pre-processing work in Photoshop or whatnot. The Plaza feature will add a square or remove one from your city. Uh, it's important to note that on larger cities, um, that feature adds a square. It doesn't necessarily uh, mean there is none. So you would, uh, on a larger city, might see two or three uh, plazas. Uh, removing the plaza option uh, will not remove all of them. It'll just remove one of them. The temple will add usually one large building somewhere in the center of town, which again can be very useful. But in this case, I'm most likely going to turn it off and leave it off. And then you'll notice the shanty town adds lots of little buildings on the outskirts. Uh, and then, of course, river and coast add water, but we're going to remove uh, all three of those because I don't want them for my town. Now, once you've got things set up, you've got to choose a city, and that's a little difficult with a generator because you can just keep hitting the build button over and over again uh, and generating all kinds of different towns and shapes and sizes. So you really kind of have to have some control or you could spend hours. Um, I recommend trying to find 10 tops, and then if you don't see what you like after that, chances are you might have to rethink what you want to do. For this project, I'm looking for a decent sized town, three roads coming in, and a town square in the center. So I'll go through quite a few iterations and try and pick five or six and export those as PNGs. Once I have four or five finalists, I'll go through each one, see which one uh, meets the most criteria I'm looking for, size, shape, etc. And then uh, through process of elimination, I whittle it down and choose the city I think fits my vision the best. Now before we can bring our city into Wonderdraft, there are a couple of things that we need to do in either Photoshop or the GIMP. Uh, the first is we need to remove the background. There are a lot of tutorials out there for Photoshop and GIMP, uh, but basically just using the magic wand, selecting the white, and removing it uh, is, in a nutshell, what you need to do. I also recommend cleaning up the lines for the roads that you see. Uh, it just makes for a cleaner presentation, although you can leave those, it's not required. Um, but when you're finally done by removing those roads and removing the background, you'll have just the buildings, and that's where that color comes in. Uh, important as to which one you select in the generator. The trick to bringing your city into Wonderdraft uh, entails bringing it in as an asset. 
You don't want to use the overlay feature. You want to bring it in like you would a tree pack or mountain pack uh, or symbols. So uh, the process is different whether you're on a Mac or a Windows PC. Here I'm showing you the path on a Mac and the path for Windows is included below. Now fortunately the generator exports in PNG so we don't have to do any kind of conversion uh, and taking off that background and removing the roads creates a nice clean image that we can paste in um, like we would any other symbol in WonderDraft. And finally we've arrived. Now once you're in WonderDraft and start your image, it, what resolution or color palette style you choose is totally up to you. I'm going to work with 4K and the color palette I'm using is just a simple custom color palette I'm using for all of my Tal'Dorei maps. So uh, whatever you choose, whether it's the Avoro or Paper or Worn is really just your call. Now the settlement I'm doing for the tutorial is a Plains Town. Uh, no water to speak of, so the first thing I'm going to do is just fill in land and get rid of all that water. Now that I've imported the city as an asset, a symbol, I'm going to go to symbols. I created a special folder for it so I'd make it easy to find, and then I'm just going to select it uh, from the list, bring it over. Uh, and if I want to rotate, shrink it, make it bigger, I can do that here. Uh, so I'll bring it down, just kind of plop it down in the center. And, you know, when you click it in place, it's just like putting anything else down in WonderDraft. The next step in my process is putting in the roads. The path tools, very effective at this, uh, allows you to have quite a few options. Uh, the first test is pretty much getting the correct uh, size. You'll notice uh, right off the bat, the paths tend to be rather thin, which doesn't really work for our town streets here. Uh, so we're just going to crank up the width. Um, could mess with the color if I wanted to, but I've got it pretty much the way I want it, and then I'll go in. You'll also notice that by default it adds a lot of roughness to the streets, so I want to bring that down. They're going to be a lot straighter in town. And then I just click in a road, kind of bring it off the side of the map, um, maybe bring up the roughness as I get further away from the town. Uh, there's lots of different ways you can do it, but basically I like to try and rough in uh, pretty much all the streets, and I just find it has a much better look. You don't have to. Uh, you could paint them in with the land painter, uh, but I really do prefer to use the roads. Uh, one of the nice things is if you want to move a road or change a road, you can always go back and click it and remove it, change the color, do all kinds of different things. As you rough in the streets in town and surrounding areas, keep in mind where people are going to walk. Um, they're going to follow the path of least resistance. Give them roads that make sense. Once the roads are in, um, it's time to uh, paint in the landscape. Uh, this is my favorite part. Um, I like to start with the color I call the stain of civilization. That's basically just that muddy brown and I pretty much underscore everywhere people touch. Uh, just to show the general wear and tear of, of people. Um, it'll kind of get muted down as we add the other colors. Uh, I like to use another base ground and, and really think of it as building up. Um, you want to set your brush nice and big and you want to have the opacity so that it's uh, very transparent. Uh, so it allows you to really layer things. I don't want to overpower uh, other colors. I want them to blend as the naturally as possible. The real trick is to make lots of passes, light passes, just at the edges, just to kind of layer things in. And I'll go back and go over the ground color with a brown and kind of go back and do it multiple times. Uh, another thing you want to do is in the town, you want to make sure you introduce green. Um, we tend to think of urban areas as greenless, but there's a surprising amount uh, in most towns, especially old medieval type towns. Now they may be weeds, they may be bushes, they could be somebody's garden. Uh, I want to do a nice common in Turstfield, so I'm going to make a nice bright green square and then I'll add a little bit of that bright green around town. 
and then I'll pretty much do the same thing with uh, various shades just to put in some maybe some areas of bushes or where there's going to be trees or forest uh, and then I'll even add a little gold and kind of color in some areas where there might be farms with you know I don't know summer wheat or, or hops or barley uh, just to kind of give a lot more natural variation um, around the square I might add a little bit of shadow shading around the edge just to show a little more wear from cutting corners and uh, foot traffic. Um, bottom line is you want to use uh, colors that uh, help define your town. Now when it comes time to place the trees in your settlement, um, it's something you want to wait till the end to do, only because the more symbols you add, uh, the slower the performance in your computer. Um, so I definitely recommend make sure you've finished your roads, your most of your painting, uh, before you start adding the trees. Now you can always turn the display off uh, to get some of that performance back, but it's just something worth noting. Now the trees are totally a personal preference. I have quite a few trees installed in my OneDrive, although I tend to almost always use defaults. And you also want to make sure that you're choosing trees uh, that fit your area. After I've got my trees in, I'll go through and add my grasses, whether it's uh, plains or marsh, uh, and just kind of fill in the empty spaces. Again, it's, it's more symbols, so it will have a little bit of a performance impact. Um, but um, if you save it till the end and you throw them in there, uh, even if you're working on a large uh, 4K map, uh, it's rather manageable and it really just makes a huge difference uh, as far as the overall look. It's just got more detail, it's more dynamic, interesting, uh, and it just says a lot more about the surrounding area. Once you finish the surrounding area, make sure to add some vegetation to your town, whether it's weeds, uh, small trees, big trees, maybe the large oak in the center of town. Uh, all of those add character and a little bit more realism and just make the overall map more interesting. And they also may serve as plot elements. You know, like that big oak tree you, you know, put in the center of town or the elm behind, you know, the old inn. Those types of things really make a big difference in both how the map looks and how your game might play. So here I'll put a couple of trees in the common just at each corner, just to kind of give it uh, some flavor. Uh, and then as you, as I finish up with all the trees and brushes over, I'll go back and I'll do a little bit more touch up of the paint. I try to put a little bit more darker green under the trees. Uh, it gives it more of a shadowed look, makes it a little more realistic. And it also gives those symbols that you placed a little bit more color as well. So just kind of gives it a, uh, a much better look overall. The final step in my process is applying the labels. There are lots of options, font styles, colors, many different ways you can do the labeling and really it's just a matter of personal preference. Well that brings me to the end of the video. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you learned something and if you have any questions leave a comment below. Thank you.